Hey guys, I'm Siobhan, a second year medical resident. It's 6.30 in the morning and I'm heading to the ICU. So today I want to really show you things I've never shown you in the hospital before and give you a sense of how cool it is that we work in teams to save some of the sickest patients in the hospital when working in the ICU. Okay, just got to the hospital. Do you guys remember last year when I did a vlog with Carol? She's my second year, she's my senior. Now that's my role. Although there are no other first year residents, so I'm still kind of like the most junior doctor um, on the team. So it doesn't feel like too much has changed, but still, I'm moving up in the ranks. <laughs> starts with an hour of formal teaching, which is great because as residents, we're still learners and unless teaching is prioritized, it can easily get forgotten when the day gets super busy. He was febrile intraoperatively hypotensive in the operating room. A right subclavian central venous line was inserted. It's now been removed in the recovery room. Prior Next, we meet with the exhausted resident who was on call overnight to get handover, which means we hear about updates and what happened overnight. Hey Sandra, how was the night? It was good, it was a good night. Yeah? Yeah, we didn't have much uh, going on, which was nice. Um, we did have a couple of abnormalities, so a patient upstairs who had an abnormal breathing pattern, and a patient down here who had a bit of abnormal blood work, and looks like he might be bleeding a little bit. We don't know exactly why, so we're gonna do some scans to figure that out, so that's organized for today. Okay, we'll get the rest of handover when, uh, without the patient confidentiality bit. Okay, so now we start rounding, which means we literally go around the ICU as a team, seeing each patient and making a plan for their care. So when I say team, I mean the doctors, medical students, bedside nurse, the pharmacist, the respiratory therapist and dietitian. And depending on the patient situation, we may also be joined by a spiritual care provider or the physical therapist. I can't imagine how we would manage to take care of such sick patients without an amazing team like this. So for each patient, we review all their medications, lab work, and imaging. Then we discuss the patient's active issues. So an issue might be weaning down a patient's sedation so that they can wake up, or treating an infection, or determining why their blood counts are low. Then we write a progress note that explains the plan that we've come up with, and write any doctor's orders, which is basically a prescription that's actually used in the hospital. So, rounds just got interrupted. We have a new patient coming to ICU who needs to get intubated now. At a time like this, the team jumps to action, getting ready to insert a breathing tube as soon as the patient arrives. Preparation is key because every minute, every second counts when it comes to an airway. It's a matter of life and death. This is what the intensive care unit is all about. And just like that, the emergency is under control and we can head back to rounds now that the patient is stable. A big part of rounding is hearing an update from the bedside nurse. So when the team comes around to our patient's room, we kind of discuss and go through our own head-to-toe assessment from the morning. Uh, what we do is we discuss their neurological status, their cardiac status, respiratory function, all the way down to their toes. And what we do is we discuss any outstanding issues that need to be addressed mm. with the team. Yeah, which is super helpful. So actually, I remember now that you needed a, an oral gastric tube, right? Yes. That goes into the mouth and goes down to the stomach to give medications through the mouth. So yes. actually, I should, let, let's just do that now. Yeah, so we don't why not? Okay, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> okay, so let's go find uh, the OG tube that we need to put in. I think it's just down here. Yeah. So this is the one that we thread down into their stomach. Now I just need to grab the rest of the supplies. It's way more pro to have all the supplies in the room before you start rather than asking a nurse to keep running in and out to get you things that you've forgotten when you're holding a tube in place. So it's 12.45, just finished with rounds, and now it's time for some lunch. I'm actually doing the keto diet right now. Um, not as challenging as I thought, it's actually been pretty good. So I brought some chicken to dip in mayonnaise and I got a salad as well. So I'm gonna heat that up and then meet the rest of the team. Oh, 
Hey guys. <laughs> okay, I said it's been easy on the keto diet, but actually that, I'm two weeks in, so I've gotten used to it. But honestly, the reason I'm doing it is mainly because I think I'm like actually addicted to carbs and to sugar, especially overnight on call. And then the next day when, you know, I want a treat and I'm tired. So I've decided I just need to stop this cycle. So it's always tough when I'm going to the cafe and I see my favorite treats though. All right, so we're just heading back to the ICU, had some lunch, which is really nice, yeah, yeah. and um, now what do we have to do? I think we've got to like what do we have to do? blood work, <sighs> yeah, check, check my chest x-ray, yeah, and we'll kind of catch up. Okay, so back in the ICU now, during rounds, I kind of make a to-do list on my patient list about all the things I need to check up on in the afternoon. So um, we've kind of divided and conquered. We've got a big team, and so we're each checking up on different things. Um, and otherwise, we kind of just wait to see what comes up in the afternoon, if we've got to do procedures, um, if we need to admit a new patient, um, put in lines, any of that kind of stuff. Um, and then if none, nothing else is going on, then we actually get more teaching, which is awesome. So one patient has a whiteout of part of their lung, meaning like one of their lungs looks totally white on x-ray. So we're trying to figure out what is causing that. So we're going to use ultrasound to go and do that now. Ultrasound is really cool because we can use it to detect different things than you do on x-ray. So in this case, we can figure out if the patient's lung is filled up with fluid or if it's collapsed. And we can do that right at the bedside. So that was great. We were able to figure out that it's a whole bunch of fluid. It looks like a big pneumonia and now we can treat it. So super helpful. So it's 5 p.m., the end of the day. Thank you to the team for letting me show what the actual team in ICU is like by participating in this. Um, if you wanna see a crazy video about me on call for 24 hours, check out this video. And if you wanna see me like hooked up to an ECG, seeing an EEG machine, so seeing my brain waves while I'm playing the violin, check out this video. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys next week, so bye for now.